Well, hello YouTube! Welcome to this Lumberjacks efficiency test, by which I will show you my results and findings about how efficient various numbers of Lumberjacks can work on a single lumber camp. This lays a proper foundation for more practical questions like How often should you refresh lumber camps? And Is there a limit to the number of villagers you can have on a single lumber camp to keep them working efficiently? It is a spirit of the LOL style video that applies mathematics to Age of Empires, since I also like both. In fact, Spirit of the LOL already made a video about refreshing lumber camps, the link is in the description. He pointed out that by refreshing lumber camps, you can prevent the efficiency from going down over time. But building new lumber camps is an investment that takes time to pay back. His video is several years old now. And in his test he compared having a single lumber camp versus rebuilding lumber camps very frequently. He concluded that it takes about 25 minutes before rebuilding lumber camps starts to pay off. By that time you would have a gap of 5 to 6 tiles between the single lumber camp and the wood line. So he basically tested two very extreme cases. I have watched quite some Age of Empires 2 Pro games and also some build orders. And I noticed that lumber camps are generally rebuilt a lot quicker than the 25 minutes that Spirit of the Law came up with. Often you see players build a second lumber camp already in the Dark Age or Feudal Age. The Viper, for example, regularly rebuilds lumber camps when there is a gap of only two or three tiles between his current lumber camp and the wood line. I expect that there is a better strategy in between the two extreme scenarios that Spirit of the Law tested. So I thought, let's dive in deeper and scrutinize the efficiency of lumberjacks on a more basic level, with the test that you see here. I ran four scenarios, with 6, 8, 10 and 12 villagers on a single lumber camp. The test is run in Dark Age, so no wood upgrades and no wheelbarrow nor handcart. I picked Magyars, because they have no eco bonuses. After each minute I measured the amount of wood stockpiled plus the amount of wood the villagers are carrying. This simple graph, drawn in paint, shows why I included the wood carried. We are trying to determine the blue trend line that describes the wood collection rate. Since villagers drop off wood in batches, the amount of wood stockpiled jumps up from time to time. Like the green line shows. I tried measuring the amount of wood stockpiled at first, but since the amount of wood carried can vary a lot between measurements, the derived efficiency per minute is all over the place. So it's hard to derive an accurate trend line from this. As the scatter plot shows for my first attempt with the 6 villager scenario, the collection rate per villager jumps up and down all the time between 13 and 22 wood per minute with even a few extreme outliers. If instead we include the amount of wood carried, then we are sampling our measurements from the orange line. For each batch, the villager first walks to the tree, which is represented by the horizontal part, then he starts chopping and the amount of wood carried increases in steps of one, and then he walks back to the lumber camp to drop it off. This orange line stays much closer to the trend line, and it lies as much above it as below it. So our measurements are more accurate and have the correct expected value. These graphs are a bit more complex when you have multiple lumberjacks working at the same time, but the principles stay the same. After running this test, I discovered that in the process of consuming a wood line, we can distinct two efficiency phases. The first phase is the phase in which the lumber camp is directly adjacent to the wood line. The villagers are working on the left and right side of the lumber camp. Two villagers can work directly next to the lumber camp, one on each side, and don't have to walk. But when you have more villagers, the walking distance quickly becomes longer. During this phase, all but two villagers try to walk to and from the lumber camp over the same line, which results in a lot of bumping. Furthermore, villagers sometimes walk all the way around the lumber camp to chop a tree on the other side. So although walking distance is generally rather short, the bumping and walking around makes for a quite unstable efficiency. 
this phase lasts for about eight minutes regardless of the number of lumberjacks that is because at most two villagers chop at a tree simultaneously so four villagers can chop these two trees first and when these two trees are finished four villagers can chop these trees meanwhile the other villagers have to chop other trees regardless of how many more there are the second phase is the phase in which there is a gap between the lumber camp and the wood line. The second phase can be split in two minor parts. In the first minor part there is a one tile gap and the villagers are mostly chopping on a straight line. This is a bit more efficient than the first phase. Firstly because there are roughly six villagers almost next to the lumber camp, so the average walking distance is similar or maybe even smaller. Secondly, the walking paths are separated for most of the villagers, so there is far less bumping. However, sometimes a villager tries to cross the small gap but bumps into a walking villager and then decides to take the long way around the lumber camp. When the gap widens further, we transition somewhat fluently into the second part of the second phase. This part is very similar, except that the edge of the wood line becomes an arc. The difference with the first part of the second phase is that the gap is now wide enough that villagers will not walk the long way around the lumber camp anymore. During this part there is hardly any bumping, except for the very small bumps that often occur when the two villagers that are chopping the same tree bump into each other. After measuring the amount of wood gathered per minute, I derived the wood collection per villager per minute which is shown in these four scatter plots. My next goal was to create a trend line through these data points using Excel's solver add-on to optimize a function using the least squares method. As said already, roughly the first eight minutes is the first phase in which there is quite some bumping. So for the first eight minutes, I have eight data points that kind of randomly jump up and down. So I felt that computing a linear function through it is the best we can do. I think a more complex function would introduce false information with so few data points. As you can see, a linear trend line through the first eight data points results in an ascending line for all four scenarios, which nicely fits my explanation that the first phase starts with some inefficient pathing and that the efficiency becomes a bit better towards the one tile gap that the second phase starts with. For the ninth minute onwards, continued the trend line using a different function for the second phase. That is why the trend line changes direction quite suddenly. In reality the efficiency function should be a bit smoother. In the second phase the villagers are consuming the wood line in a semicircle with low bumping randomness. In hindsight I used the wrong function for this that has incorrect behavior far away from the domain of this plot. But I had trouble finding and correcting a right function form. So we'll stick with these trend lines since they fit the data quite nicely. For all scenarios, the efficiency in the second phase goes down because the increasing walking distance is the dominant factor. But it goes down slower and slower over time because the number of trees at a certain walking distance rises proportionally with the walking distance and because the time spent per tree also increases because of the walking distance. Now we compare the trend lines by putting them in a single plot. We see that the efficiency is lower when having more villagers on a single lumber camp, as expected. The difference is significant, but not that large. Over time, all efficiencies go down, but the distance between the lines stays about the same. So, we would like to conclude that the percentage of efficiency loss increases over time for having more villagers working on the lumber camp. However, drawing this conclusion for the second phase is actually a big mistake. It is a false comparison that provides us with misleading information. Feel free to pause the video now if you want to try to figure out yourself why this is a mistake. The mistake becomes clearer when I show you the state of the test cases around the 20 minute mark. As the footage shows, the more lumberjacks you have, the more wood they have chopped already after 20 minutes. So by comparing these cases with equal time flow, we are comparing efficiency for different wood line states. 
but what we actually want to know is given a certain wood line state how does the efficiency change if i put fewer or more lumberjacks at work there so we shouldn't plot efficiency over time but efficiency over the total amount of wood collected since that represents the state of the wood line since i measured the amount of wood chopped for my data points we can transform our normal plot to a scatter plot with the efficiency plotted against the amount of wood chopped and then it looks like this the first phase is about eight minutes for all cases so the more villages we have the wider the line of trees they start cutting so the more wood is chopped before the second phase is reached after about 1500 wood is collected the efficiency for 10 and 12 villagers is even noticeably higher than for 6 and 8 villagers in this graph. <coughs> this is also misleading. Of course, 12 villagers shouldn't be more efficient than 6. The problem is that we are comparing different wood line states again. Here is the footage in which around 1700 wood is chopped for all 4 test cases. As you can see, in the upper two scenarios, villagers already have to walk a bit further than on the lower two scenarios which is caused by the fact that the 10 or 12 villagers have chopped a wider line initially so for them the walking distance is smaller after collecting the first 1700 wood therefore we should ignore how the graphs compare on the center part of the plot however far into the second phase when the walking distance grows to four or even five tiles the cutaway area surpasses the initially chopped line of trees and then the wood lines of all scenarios look very much alike so in the last part of the test we have a fair comparison the, pro the plot strongly suggests that the efficiency differences fade away over time but i'm still not really happy with this plot we need to compare efficiencies for truly equal wood line states so i ran another test I won't go into details, but I basically created five different wood lines with a gap of 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 tiles between the lumber camp and the wood line and measured the efficiency for 3 minutes of wood chopping on each of these wood lines for 4, 8, 12, 16 and 20 villagers. Then I put these data points in a graph and drew a line through it, resulting in this plot. Now we finally get logical results. As you can see, having more villagers always decreases the efficiency. Again, the efficiency differences are largest when the lumber camp is right up against the wood line. Our first conclusion is that with four or less villagers, there is so little bumping that having no gap is actually more efficient than a one tile gap. This could be the case also for five villagers and maybe even for six, but for seven or more villagers, a one tile gap is definitely more efficient than no gap. The second conclusion is that the efficiency differences shrink over time, which we already expected based on the previous graph. When the gap grows beyond a single tile, eight villagers is about as efficient as four. When the gap grows further to two tiles, the graph for 12 villagers gets close too. The line for 16 and 20 villagers gets similarly close a bit later. So we can rephrase our second conclusion by saying that the larger the walking distance, the more lumberjacks the lumber camp can accommodate without significant drop in efficiency. Based on these results, the following graph shows an estimated continuous line for how many villagers you can put to work on a wood line to ensure that the efficiency doesn't drop by more than a few percent. I chose to start the plot at two villagers for a zero tile gap since in this situation, two villagers can chop wood without walking at all by standing in the corners between the lumber camp and the wood line. Any extra villager would need to walk around one of those two villagers, which I think loses at least several percent efficiency. And I think it fits the overall plot shape nicely. A typical game starts with three or four lumberjacks on a single lumber camp, which is quite okay still when you build the lumber camp directly against the wood line. Increasing the number of lumberjacks to 7 or 8 shortly before clicking up to feudal is perfectly fine if there is a one tile gap. If you have a large gap in the late game, 
don't hesitate to put 20 villagers at work there. You might want to build a new lumber camp by then, but at least we can conclude that when you rebuild a lumber camp for a larger number of villagers, you should build two or three new ones instead of a single new one. Having more villagers on a wood line than this graph suggests might be okay in certain situations. For example, you might not want to invest in a new lumber camp if you plan on building new town centers in a minute against the wood line. I hope to explore these topics further in future videos and make it a bit more practical. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive journey into the math behind Age of Empires.